I want to shift gears a little bit right now and head into another element that was raised yesterday is the importance of a, of a qualified workforce in order to continue to grow our environment and to attract businesses to the area. And with that, I want to bring in Jim Connolly from the St. Petersburg College, uh, who is a co-host here for this event. Um, and St. Petersburg College has done many things to help improve our, our quality workforce. Uh, Dr. Connolly currently serves as Director of Corporate Training at St. Pete College. Prior to joining St. Pete College, he was a Business Development Manager for Adobe Systems and Senior Director of Mobile Operations at Jetform Corporation. He's taught and coached at both the high school and college levels where he spent 15 years of his professional career. Jim completed his doctoral studies at Barry University where he received his PhD in higher education, administration, and leadership. <coughs> Jim received his community college certification in higher education from the University of Florida and his master's degree in counseling from Edinburgh State University of Pennsylvania. Jim Connell. All right, Stacy. Is this where you want it? Okay. I stand on the shoulders of a lot of really great people, starting with Dr. Law, and I saw one of our board members here this morning. I've had two really excellent uh, opportunities here at the college to work with, one with Jim Oliver and one with Dr. Ann Cooper. They've provided me some great, great leadership and uh, great words of wisdom at many times. One of the things that I wanted to talk about today was, and I learned this at a young age, the quality of a workforce is one of the biggest prerequisites to economic development. Did you hear that? A quality education, quality workforce is what gives us better economic development. I learned this a long time ago. Uh, William said yesterday, who remembered the 80s? And I see some gray hairs out there, so I know you do. I was fresh out of college and I'm thinking, I'm from Youngstown, Ohio, going to school in Tennessee, going back to Youngstown, and I'm going to be a teacher. I had my bachelor's of science in education, and so I started picking up certificates. I took a, a chemistry course in, at Tennessee Tech so I could teach physical science. I moved back to Youngstown. I took a, a geology course so I could teach earth science. And I was in Pennsylvania. I took a a course so I could teach life science. So I kept upgrading my skills. And um, the unemployment rate at that time was 23%. I'm newly married, I'm gonna go buy a house. And interest rates were 18%. Well, that was just un not gonna happen. All my friends were working at the mills. Well, you know what happened to that situation. They're driving new cars and here I am I can't even buy a house. So I said, I'm going to keep going. So uh, as I'm working, I got my first job as a physical science teacher. And all of a sudden, the mills start shutting down. Now all my friends that came out of high school and start, were getting laid off. And so I was at Mercier's College then. Uh, I went from Harbor Creek High School in Pennsylvania, Mercier's College. And we got a grant from the government that allowed us to work with uh, the people that were getting laid off and teach them employability skills. A lot of these people didn't have a resume, didn't know how to write a resume, so we started doing that. And then we started doing more of the training at the college that was not uh, necessarily the academic, but it was, a, it was some programming classes and it was a lot of technology. And I, I say all that because Dr. Law called me in his office uh, couple months back and says, we're going to change some things here at the college. We're going to start offering more certificates. I said, okay, we'll do that. And that sounds like a great idea. And it resonated with me because I said, all along, that's what I've been doing. I got my certificates. I got my first job. I got my master's degree. I got my second job. Then I got my doctorate and I was able to move around through the college. And so it's helped me. So I can see it helping the community. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you where St. Petersburg College is. I'm going to show you where we're going. And I'm going to do it through the, the collaborations, strategies, and tools that we use here at the college. And we use, these, we use these tools and strategies to put people back to work. Um, we'll show you some of those numbers today. We'll help keep 
employers happy. And I was going to say happy, happy, happy. If you like Duck Dynasty, that's <laughs> you know where that comes from. So we try to keep uh, employers happy so they don't leave the area and they're not interested in leaving the area. And then we want to assist existing companies to up, up their level of performance for their individuals. At the college, we offer 38 uh, associate uh, programs, associate AS degrees, and we confer uh, over 1,000 of those annually. 22 workforce uh, degrees in our bachelor's program, another uh, 1,100 degrees. You see 436 licensures in the areas that they come in. Um, more than 1,500 clinical students in the healthcare or health related placements each year. And we're currently uh, have nearly 800 internships, and I see Jason Krupp's out there. Uh, the goal for next year is over 1,600, and we're well on our way for that. Um, I did learn from Dr. Oliver, shameless self-promotion. So if anybody would like an intern, uh, you can see me or Jason after, after the uh, presentations today. Uh, also, at our Southeast Public Safety Institute, you see we do the law enforcement training. Everybody, has anybody been to the Allstate? You know what I'm talking about down there. But we have uh, 515 sworn law enforcement officers. You see, we do that in-state and out-state. When we say Southeast, it's not just um, Florida. It is the Southeast part of the United States, uh, the firefighters that we have in our academies, um, correction officers. But look at the number of students that we've worked with in in-service training, 20, 24,783. So we're doing, we're doing a pretty good job, and we're, uh, we still have a strong commitment to, the, uh, to Pinellas County. Who's been to the CoLabs? I know half of you have been there. Yeah, isn't that a great facility? Uh, that's just one of the many things that we do, and we interface with businesses all the time over there. We, is anybody on our advisory boards that are in here? So we have 39 um, advisory boards that represent over 500 individuals. And then we work with the Pinellas County Schools. We do GED preparation. We do SAT preparation um, and a lot of things. Uh, or there's a whole lot of other programs with dual enrollment and everything else, but we're sticking to workforce. We have uh, another strong commitment in our corporate training unit, as Mike mentions. We do a lot of workforce and professional development. Uh, last year, we worked with 42 companies, and in those 42 companies, did 280 different type of training titles. Currently, we have 14 companies that we're working with. I'm gonna list a couple of those in a minute. And then we have students in our non-credit uh, based programs that had 308 uh, certificates and in our credit base was 937. And you can expect those to double in the next year as well. These are just a few of the companies that we were working with uh, this past month and a half. I was going to start listing them all and put logos up there and then I, I said there, that would be pretty overwhelming. So those are just a few of the companies this past month that we're working with. Uh, these are some companies yesterday William mentioned that are likely, you want to keep the company so they don't leave the area. These ones may be unlikely to leave the area, but things would certainly slow down. Um, we're doing customer service with, of course, the, the transit system. City of Clearwater, we are doing our 27th cohort with them right now, doing leadership and secession planning. Um, we've been, that's lasted over six years so far. And it's about 50, 50 individuals that do the training each time. We just did the deal with the Veterans Administration, and it's not just the Bay Pines. The Veterans Administration has the opportunity to uh, send their programmers up to our place to get CompTIA Health IT certifications. And they've opened that up through the entire state. Uh, these are just a listing of the certificates of the 308 that, that we mentioned. And those are the non-credit, the 937 in different areas. If anybody's interested in those, that would be something we could talk to you about. Um, learn to Earn. Uh, has anybody heard of the Learn to Earn program? It's really a great way to upgrade your skills. And hey, I've Watson, this is nice to see you. We had uh, this Learn to Earn program has just been phenomenal. One day, Dr. Law calls me into his office and he says, 
there are 50,000 unemployed people in Pinellas County. What are you doing about it? I said, well, Dr. Lai, I just returned from a, a job fair, 4,500 people, and St. Petersburg College had zero representation. Zip, zilch, not a one. He goes, well, we are going to change that. When I say we, I don't mean me. <laughs> So anyway, we, we created the Learn to Earn program, but he has fully supported it. Uh, he's given brochures to the governor. He's passed out. Uh, everybody that comes in his office gets a Learn to Earn brochure. And when you look at the numbers, for the month we have 353 students, and I wanted to put that in because we're already over 12,000 in the past three years. That represents several thousand uh, certifications, but those certifications are self-reporting. One of the things that we did at the college is put in a, a test center. So now we can, we can go that's just more of the same numbers year over year. You can see it's pretty consistent, but this year we're off to a big start. We put in our own test center. So now, as part of the programs that we're offering, we'll actually give the student a voucher. They'll take the voucher, they'll go in uh, and take it right in the epicenter where, where we sit. The, uh, I told you I was going to tell you where we were, the collaboration that we've done to do many of those programs, and as we go forward, exists with, of course, Pinellas Economic Development. They're very supportive. Career Sources has been a big help to us. And the reason I talked about Watson is because we were just at a Grow Smarter talking about the 2020 initiative today that he's kicked off. And it's to take 2,450 2, people from uh, poverty and move them up through raises and uh, income, and just getting jobs. And one of the things that we could do as a college is help them get certifications that will move up. Similar to Learn to Earn, we have a couple other programs, and I'll talk to you about those in a minute. But those are, those are some great initiatives, take you from cradle to career. And we even do um, the over 50 crowd. There's a lot of programs for that, that right now with AARP and some of those organizations and some people that want to go back and retool. Not everybody's ready to uh, retire. What we've done with Pe Pinellas Economic Development is we do site tours. And Mike mentioned Bristol Myers Squibbs yesterday. One of the things we did, now we didn't get the job here in Pinellas County. But what we were able to do is we go sit down in this meeting and they always give the name of project, Project Big Bird or Project Flamingo. So we go over and we sit down and it's kind of like that show where the CEO goes undercover. And we sit there and we don't know who we're talking to and they talk in code. And then anyway, we let them know the certificates that we have, how we can help them with their workforce. And one of the exciting things about that is when Bristol Myers came in, they said that they were going to hire 600 employees and all those incomes would be over $65,000 a year. So when we go to those meetings, we don't know who we're talking to or where they're going to land, but we partner. HCC and I work closely together on a number of different uh, initiatives. One of the things that we're doing right now with them is Amazon, you know, is moving in. They're trying to find 1,000 employees. And I said, hey, you know, if you live in South St. Pete, it's just a short drive across the Sunshine Skyway Bridge. Not a sh maybe a short drive, but just crossing the bridge, and you can end up right there. So we're working with them on um, get, getting those 1,000 people, or yeah, those 1,000 people hired. That's how many Amazon's going to take in. And then we're going to uh, provide, uh, we provide a ton of training. You heard this yesterday. Provide a, provide a train and trainable workforce. We have many of those people in place. HCC keeps asking us, how are we doing our learner and how are we doing our 24 programs and that. And we do share that information sometimes. We have, we have uh, quick response training grants that we do with the economic development as well. And that helps keep our companies here. And you can see this isn't based on their employees. This is the number of dollars that these companies have received and the number of employees that they're going to hire. These are for new hires. So if you take the 1,000 from Amazon, you take the 600 from Bristol Myers Squibb, and you take this 478, you come out with 2,078 new jobs for people in our area. So those are all great, great opportunities. And if you have, if you have a demand, you get a hold of me, and we'll make sure that we can supply that. And that's part of the certificate training that we're doing. So um, 
certification training is getting very, very specific now. And people are starting to look at um, different hiring models. If you look at uh, what we've done with Career Source, we've taken our 24 program and we've used a high tech training grant. We just had 200, our 200th person come into the program. So there's still many in the program and still job seeking, but 128 have completed that and uh, 88 have received employment. I have the demographics of some of the participants on there. So you see that 90, 96 students or 48% have uh, had had some college. But 30% of our students in that program have bachelor's degrees. And that's what surprised me. There's a lot of unemployed people with four-year degrees. So the certificate on top of their bachelor's degree is what's helped them reach employment. And then, of course, 13% or 26 of those are, are veterans, and uh, you see the disabled students, 18 of those were disabled. So we're real proud of that program. Three of the students in the program have received jobs over $100,000 a year. Um, I know one was with Cisco, one's with VMware. So they're, they're getting uh, the jobs that are helping our community, like we said yesterday. What I, why in the world would you have a yield sign in the middle of all this? Which one of these are the, are the ones we use today? The one on the right, the one on the left, or, or both of them? Who says both? Who says the one on the right? Who says the one on the left? Who's afraid to vote? <laughs> we, why, why do I say this? We're, we're making some changes here. In 1974, the yellow yield side, the Department of Transportation says, we're not going to use that anymore. It's going to be red and white. There's not been a yellow one around for 40 years, 1974 to now, 40 years. So I was t asking this guy about that, and he was adamant that it was still yellow. And I said, there's no way. And the reason I bring that up is because you need to change. And so we're going to change some things in corporate training as far as rebranding and a couple, couple things like that. But I thought that would be a good way to show some change and how some people don't change. Um, we are faced with new uh, challenges when it comes to the workforce, and there's been a paradigm shift since the recession. The Great Recession has made employers be slower to hire, be very specific in their hiring. Um, used to could get a job in computer uh, programming if you spoke one language. Well, now you have to have Java Oracle with HTML, maybe some .NET mixed in. It's not just one language. You have to be multilingual to, to work in a computer industry. And then uh, just so the, the preparedness has changed, so we have to change and we're going to do that. The cost of college isn't getting less expensive. It's going up. And if you're unemployed, a day is too long. And when it gets to be a week or two weeks, or multiple years, it really is a, a hardship. So most of our training programs are all um, 10 weeks or less. And that's one of the ways we're gonna keep it. Um, some, you, you can't, can't because of the way the industry is, healthcare and some of those things. Uh, if, anyway, that's where we're gonna go. These are some of our new opportunities um, that we're working with. And of course, I have the Urban League on there because we have done some stuff with them and some stuff with goodwill, but we can do so much more. And that's what we're, that's what we're, what we're fixing to do. As we get into, go from our opportunities to our strategies, we want to talk about some of the avenues that we're still going to go down. And again, I just haven't mentioned about certificates the entire time. So there's, I said after I got my doctorate, I'd never take another class. And guess what? I signed up for a, a pilot that we're doing in project management. Dr. Law told me, if I got fired as president tomorrow, I'd take a project management class. So I said, well, oh, okay. So I go and I look where I sit at the epicenter, a 10-mile radius of where I sit, there are 250 jobs in project management. And it's, it, so there you go again. It's a degree with a certification, and project management is used in every facet of just about everything we do these days. But we're still going to continue with the, uh, I talked about the fleet speed and flexibility. We can develop programs quickly. Um, Dave Outlaw and I were talking about some of the programs we need to get started on in the South County with engineering, or um, 
manufacturing. We learned a lot about manufacturing. Jerry Cousin and I am meeting next week. We're going to put a, a training center up in Oldsmar so it's closer to where the um, jobs are and, again, to help our people. So those are some of the things that we can do on a, in a speedy manner and being flexible in doing that. And when we hire uh, adjuncts or professional trainers at our in our offices. We're looking for people who have some experience, um, not just going to school the whole time and then start teaching, but people that actually have some business experience. If you want to be an entrepreneur and teach that for us, then we like to have some entrepreneurial experience. And so we can get people, we have a, a lot of them in the, in the hopper that enjoy doing that. The world of opportunity is great. You see on my uh, corporate training offerings, 57 programs, and actually that just went up from 40, uh, 44 last week. We picked up 13 um, SAP certificates that we can now offer. So uh, we have a long way to go. The 540 represents a combination of what's offered through the state, performance-based funding, and then Region 14. Region 14 is where Pinellas County is. You see there's 312, and collectively between the credit side and, and my side, we have 124. So we can do a lot more. We're, we're inter, uh, as Dr. Oliver say, intertwingling. Is that how we do it? We're putting the certificate requirements within the coursework. So when you're done with the course, you have the material necessary to take these industry certifications. And in addition to that, we're offering uh, test prep so the students could come in and, and pr prepare for the test over the course of a couple eight hour days. This is the, the 24 program, and it says a program for IT professionals. But this can be, plug anything into that, plug project management into it. Um, how about social media? We're close to signing our contract with the Social Media uh, Institute, who has a national uh, certificate. And you say, social media, everybody is touched by say, social media. But the market via social media is a little bit different. So if you have a degree, and it's English, and you can't find an English job or a journalist job or something, if you come take your social media class with me, because if you have an English degree, you're probably well-read, well-spoken, and well-written, right? So you come to me, we put you into this course, and we help you do the marketing side of social media. So now the, the Twitter, the Facebook, and, and um, all that is tied into one program, and we can do that in, I think it's 35 hours. So while we call it, why do we call it 24? Because it's one day of boot camp, 22 days of distance learning, and then one day of presentations. So if you're taking a web class, uh, Java, what you do is you come in and you build a website, and then you present your website to the class. And social media, you'll do the same type of thing. We call it 24, it's pretty snazzy. What we found out with the program is we had to break out the days a little bit differently because we wanted to do some checkpoints to make sure the students were on task. And the first day when they come in, every student is learning Agile training. Are you guys familiar with Agile and Scrum? I mean, it's one of the hottest things around right now as far as working in teams and how do you modulize what you're doing and then bring that together. So they'll get together the first day of class not knowing each other, and they'll start working on a project. By the end of the class, the students are doing their presentation, and if they walk up there and they have on uh, sandals, and they can see their toes, the teacher's immediately saying, that's not how you present. Here's how you need to do it. You need to, and, and so we start working on employability skills right then. We have our other people in the classroom throughout the day that start working on their resumes, upgrading their resumes, how are uh, resumes read through the computer. Yesterday we spent a lot of time on manufacturing. These are some of the different manufacturing opportunities we have here at the college. The uh, uh, quote from our president, um, he's a firm believer in internships and certificates, and so he supports all of what we do. Here's where I want to lean into what we're doing that's going to be different. Why do I use FedEx? Has everybody seen the X or the arrow in FedEx? Some of you. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. Most of you do. No? 
Well, if you look at it, one, you want to use the airplane for a couple reasons. One, it's going up. We have Project Accelerate, and we're going fast and furious forward. But there's three arrows in that. Um, if you look between the E and the X, you'll see an arrow. And that's on every FedEx uh, truck sign that you see today. But that's the direction that we're headed. The tools that we use are the IT gap analysis that was provided by Pinellas Economic Development. They did one on manufacturing. They're working on a business one right now, I believe. We have a business intelligence that we're taking at the college that we've developed on our own so that we'll be able to read how many internships do we have right now. We can do some of those things, but we're going to take all the other data so we know who's getting the certificates, where the jobs are, and where they're being placed. I mentioned our test center earlier. And then we have the uh, Burning Glass. It's a company that's created a product called Labor Insight. This is what I did yesterday when we were done, done talking. I went back and ran some numbers. What, what Burning Glass has done is they have 78,000 robots that spider 28,000 websites. It's an advanced analytic, analytic application. So every day when we come in, we're going to find out where the jobs are what the jobs need to be and how we're going to use those to help our students get certificates. So if you look at this, um, I know it's kind of hard to see. The, the, the PowerPoint is on the website, so you can go back and look at some of these. And there were actually 86 total certifications. I limited it to 10 to make it uh, easier on the eyes, but I can see it didn't quite do that. But there are a total of 4,654 jobs in Pinellas County for manufacturing. Mike said yesterday that 30,000 people, was it you said that, Mike, 30,000 people get up every day and go to work in jobs in manufacturing? Well, th there's uh, 4,654 4, jobs available. So that's what we're training in those areas. Then we took the, the top certificates in technology and now this is a little bit longer period of time. This was 12 months. I just wanted to go back. We have nine months, six months. A lot of times we just do three months because as we drill down, we can find the actual company that's posting the job. But over the last year, there's 200 certifications in technology. And so, of course, I couldn't list all those. But there are 21,843 jobs available in this area. So technology is a big thing for us, and we've been pouring it on. Then you get into healthcare. I want to see a couple things in healthcare. If you look at the healthcare, I think there, it's not just, we know registered nurses is way out there and we're doing everything we can to get more of those going with all our clinical sites and trainings. But there's a whole bunch of other professions within the healthcare profession and certificates that are involved around that. And then the job titles in healthcare, I thought this was interesting. They had sales. Well, I'm thinking sales. Well, then I started drilling down. I said, well, pharmaceuticals. So these are the types of things that you can drill down. And the last one is what gets me excited. If you're a high school student, you can look right there. There, a high school, This is a high school student with two years of experience or less. There are 4,000 4, jobs for those individuals. And so what we're doing is putting in, if it's not being offered at uh, Pinellas Technical College, I saw our friends here yesterday from Pinellas Technical College, uh, you can get your certified nursing, your LPN, that will articulate in the credit at the college. We're going to introduce some clinical medical assisting programs. Those jobs are in high demand. And as you can see, as you go down the chart, the number of jobs that are, that are available yeah, I was thinking, why would accounting be in the nursing? You know, and I started doing some research on that. And a CPA, of all things, because when you get into the, the legal guardian type stuff, when the generations get older, there's a whole lot that you can do with that. And that was just an industry that I didn't think of. So how do we train not just taking CPAs, but how do you take a CPA and when you're offering them their continuing education, how do you get more classes that are going to be viable for what they do? So we do our tax seminars and, and do a lot of those things face to face, but there's so much more that we can do, and that's what we're learning from Burning Glass. So the PowerPoint is on the site, and we're going to have a panel discussion in a few minutes, right? Thank you.